I've got a friend for this video because he won't stop making noise and it is really annoying. So, uh, meet my bearded dragon. He's just called Dragon because I'm extremely creative with names. So, he's going to be chilling while this video is going on. Look at his head move. Whoa. Hello. So I have owned my Fujifilm GFX 50S and my Metagon 65mm 1.4 for around 4 months now and I thought it was a good time to do a review. I'm going to do two separate videos, one on the GFX and one on the Metacon, and as you can tell, this is the Metacon. This video is going to have different sections, so it's not just a jumbled up mess. It's going to be why I bought this camera, how I use it, and the pros and cons. So to start off, I'll talk about why I bought the camera. I bought this camera because I wanted a digital alternative to my Pentax 67 and the 105 2.4. I've grown to love the look of the 105 2.4 and I just love using the Pentax, but the film was getting a bit expensive and I also just wanted a digital camera that would really just be a workhorse. After doing some research, I found a video where Carl McDougall mentioned the Mitagon and I'd done a little bit more research, but perfectly timed he just then released a Mitagon review just a few days after me finding out about it so that really propelled me forward to buy this lens so basically I bought this lens and this camera to be an alternative to my Pentax 67 what are you doing so now I'll quickly talk about how I use this lens I'm primarily a portrait photographer I do a bit of landscape here and there but it's not usually like you know breathtaking landscapes it's just like I don't know a building that I find cool or something like that so primarily being a portrait photographer, you can expect I take a lot of portraits. And this lens is honestly one of the best lenses I've ever used for portraits. I knew it mimicked the look of the Pentax 67 and the 105 2.4, so I knew it was going to be amazing for full body portraits, but I was pleasantly surprised with how good it was with headshots. With the Pentax 67, I primarily shot full body portraits and I didn't really do many headshots because I knew it couldn't focus that close, but I really loved using the Mimir RZ67 in college and getting headshots with that. He's trying to climb on my arm now. What are you doing? In college, I was really inspired by the work of Rosie Matheson and her boys magazine. I actually ended up buying it and getting a signed copy for my 18th birthday, which was pretty nice. Anyway, I loved her headshot photos and I thought they were amazing and I just wanted to recreate that. So I ended up using the Mir RZ67 and the 110 2.8 for quite a while. And I was surprised when I used this lens for a headshot of my brother and it ended up creating a very similar look to the Mir RZ67 with the 110. So basically, I now have a lens that can do my favourite full body and also my favourite headshot images, which is just ideal. So anyway, let's talk about the pros and cons. The first pro is the look that the lens creates. Even though the Fujifilm GFX is a medium format camera, it's not true medium format, which means a lot of people say you can't get that medium format look. But with this lens, you can definitely get that look. With the extremely shallow aperture and the separation from the subject, you can get a look that just rivals the Pentax 67 and really any medium format film camera. And that is exactly why I bought this lens, is because I wanted a digital alternative to medium format, and this is exactly that. And the next pro is that this lens feels really sturdy. This lens is an absolute tank, and you can tell that it's made really well. I was surprised that a third party manufacturer made lenses this well. In my opinion, it even feels more sturdy than the native GFX lenses that Fuji makes. I think they just feel a bit plasticky compared to this lens. The lens also looks amazing. It's such a good looking lens. I like the markings that it has for the distance. And I like that you can see the aperture on the lens like other Fuji lenses. But this one reminds me of like the Leica lenses, the new ones. Or, or it kind of reminds me of the Q2 or just like the Q or you know, any of the Q series. It reminds me of the lens that's on those but just like a really big version. And the last pro is the price. For a medium format, oh God, where are you going? <laughs> As I was saying, this is a surprisingly cheap lens for a medium format system. By no means is this a budget lens. It's definitely still expensive. It's 500 pounds. But for a medium format system, you're not gonna find much lower than that. And let me tell you, it is worth it. This lens is absolutely amazing. I don't think I've ever had more consistent results with a lens, other than probably the 110 on the Mamiya. Now let's get on to the cons. The first con is the size. This lens is massive. This means that the lens does look a bit out of place on the Fujifilm GFX 50S2 and the Fujifilm GFX 100S. But on the Fujifilm GFX 50S1, it does look sort of you know like it should be there but still it does look a bit too big for the body being big means it also weighs a lot 
This lens is very, very heavy and it actually weighs almost the same as my Pentax X7 with the 105 2.4, like just being the lens. Being so heavy, the camera does feel a bit weird when you are holding it. It does feel very front heavy to the point where it does feel like a bit of a burden. And also, if you have it around your neck, your neck will start to ache after half an hour to an hour of use. But like I was saying before, this lens is very well built, so it makes sense with it being so heavy. You can tell that it's built well purely from the weight of the lens. The next con is that the lens doesn't have any electronic parts to it, so it's manual focus. This might not bother some people, but if you are looking for an autofocus lens, then this is not the one. It does give a more film-like experience if that's what you're going for, but if you do just want an autofocus lens that, you know, can get good results with snappy autofocus, this is not it. You're gonna have to purely manual focus. But I know for a lot of people that isn't really that much of a con, so it's really personal preference, this one. This also ties into the next con. Because the lens doesn't have any electronic parts in it, it doesn't really work well with the GFX. I put that a bit badly. It does work well as a lens, but when you stop down the lens, you will see your screen or your viewfinder on the GFX go dark. And even if you put your ISO up, it doesn't really compensate for that. So your image may look underexposed in the viewfinder, but it may actually be perfectly exposed when you take the image. It can be a bit of a pain, but it's not really much to worry about. And it's also just something that you have to get used to. I have definitely made my fair share of mistakes by taking an image thinking it was perfectly exposed, but they end up being really overexposed or, you know, vice versa. And the final con is that the lens is hard to find. While it is readily available from uh, China and Japan, it's difficult to find anywhere else. And if you're buying from China or Japan, then China you have really long wait times on your delivery and Japan you have to pay a lot in customs fees. I did manage to find one lens in the UK when I was looking to buy this lens, but it sold out in two hours and it was like six or seven hundred pounds instead of, you know, the 500 and then the import taxes, which does sort of like balance out a bit. I still got mine for cheaper, but you know, it it's, it's a lot harder to find in the UK. Anyway, that is the end of this video, but I'd like to finish it with a question that I got asked not that long ago. And that question is, do I think that this lens and like camera setup could replace my film photography like shooting? And personally, no, I don't think so. While it has replaced my film shooting for the past four months for the most part, I have shot here and there. But recently, I have been picking up my Pentax 6.7 more just because I missed that film experience. While I do think it could replace your film work like from looks wise, I don't think it could replace your film work from the feeling of using a film camera. I said that really badly, but I hope you get what I mean. Personally, I miss using a film camera when I was using this lens and camera combo, but it does get very similar results and it's a lot more reliable than a film camera. Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, you get a bye bye from me and a bye bye from my dragon. I, I need a new name for him. He's just called Dragon. Oh, and he's like properly attached to my beanie now. So I'm going to have to live the rest of my days like this. Anyway, that is it. Goodbye.